Hello, and welcome to Candidates Upfront, a public interest election program of Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Our November 7th general election is coming up. Citizens who are 18 or older will vote for judges, school directors, and township, borough, and city officials. The deadline to register to vote is October 23rd. To check your voting status, go to vote.pa.gov. That's vote.pa.gov. You can register, change your party, locate your polling place, or apply for an absentee or mail-in ballot. And the deadline to apply for those is October 31st. If you are looking for information on statewide, school, or township races, or borough officials, please use the League's online voters guide, vote411.org. That's vote411.org. And for information on countywide and Reading candidates, please stay tuned. The League interviewed candidates in contested races, those who wanted to be interviewed. And for each race, the candidates got the same basic questions and had the same amount of time to answer them. For the League, I'm Judith Cranus, and let's begin. Hello, I'm Kay Herring, a member of the League of Women Voters of Berks County. And today, uh, we are going to be interviewing a county commissioner. Four candidates are completing for three seats as Berks County Commissioner. They are Democrats Dante Santoni Jr. and Jess Royer, and Republicans Christian Leinbach and Michael Rivera. The Board of Commissioners is the chief governing body of the county. The three elected at-large members perform executive and legislative functions of county government. The term is four years, and the current annual salary for a commissioner is $110,339,000, um, and the commissioner chair is $113,678. Each candidate's view are their own and not those of the League or BCTV. Um, this interview is with Dante Santoni, Jr. Um, welcome. Good to be with you. Thank you. Please tell our viewers about yourself and why are you running for this office? Well, th thank you, Kay, and, uh, and good morning. Um, uh, Dante Santoni, I'm running for Berks County Commission in the upcoming November 7th election. A little bit about my background. I'm a born, born and raised here in, in Berks County. I'm a Muhlenberg High School graduate and then went on to Villanova University where I attained my accounting degree. Uh, Never thought I would get involved in politics, but I uh, started working in local government out in Muhlenberg Township, and that led me to my career, a uh, 20-year career, in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. I represented Pennsylvania's 126th legislative district for 20 years. Uh, after, after I retired from the legislature, I did some work for Penn National Gaming, now Penn Entertainment. I had been chairman of the Gaming Oversight Committee when I was uh, in, the, in the House, so I have some background there worked there for a few years, and then I was appointed by the House Democratic Caucus to the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board. And I think that my career as, as a legislator and as a gaming, mem as a gaming board uh, member uh, sets me up pretty well for county commissioner because, as you said, there's a legislative and an executive function of being a county commissioner. So my time in the House and my time as a gaming board, I think, sets me up pretty well for that. Uh, I'm running because I want to make Berks County a better place to live, work, and raise your family. There's a lot of opportunities here in Berks County. Uh, county commissioners, uh, I think, are going to be, are, have the opportunity to lead and direct the many resources that we have. And, and I look forward to, to being one of those commissioners, and I look forward to, to the questions that we have uh, today. Okay. Thanks, Dante. Um, we're going to go into a few specific areas that county commissioners are responsible for and how you feel about them. But what do you think is the most important thing that you would like to achieve if you are elected? Well, I, I think uh, as a county commissioner, as you say, you have, you have, a, lot of, you have a lot of opportunities. And economic development, uh, I think, is number one. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of variance, variables there, but I think the passenger rail service that, that we've been talking about for many years I think has a real opportunity to, to come to fruition and I as one of the county commissioners, if I'm blessed to be elected, would, would, really, would really, really support that. Um, you know, government isn't the, shouldn't be the creator of jobs, but it can be a catalyst and I think that's what uh, a county commissioner can do, work with local, state, federal officials in, in bringing opportunities, bringing funds. 
Uh, and I think that economic development, good jobs, good paying jobs with good benefits, uh, and also to make Berks County a destination is going to be one of the many of the areas that I look forward to uh, making a priority as a county commissioner. Um, the next question actually deals with economic development. Um, do you feel that policy changes or investments are necessary to encourage sustainable, well-paying jobs throughout the county? I do. I, I think, as I, as I mentioned in, in my previous remarks, um, government isn't the job creator. Uh, there, are, there are government jobs, of course, but it should be a, a catalyst. It should be something that uh, gives businesses, works with businesses, works with local governments, works with community leaders in providing uh, opportunities for, for businesses to come in that, that provide good paying jobs. Again, to make Berks County a, a destination. We hear a lot about uh, some of the surrounding counties and, 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 and the growth that they've had. Um, like in Lancaster and, and the Lehigh Valley, and I don't think Berks County should take a back seat to any of those. Uh, we support those areas. We, we hope they do well, um, but we want to make, make Berks County, as I keep saying, and I'll keep saying, a great place to live, work, and raise your family. Okay. Weather damage has increased throughout the county. What can the county do to lessen risk and damage? Should I, I know there's three questions here, mm -hmm. but I'll ask them all, and okay. then, then we can go back. Um, if we need to. Should Berks have a sustainable plan? And is the change in weather figured into the county's land use planning? Okay, I'll answer the second one first about having a plan, a sustainability plan, and I, I absolutely think we should. Um, and again, county government can be the oversight, if you will, with other local governments to, to I'm gonna make it a priority if I'm a county commissioner to work with our local communities. Uh, we just, we just saw the devastation that occurred at Antietam School District, and I know that, uh, that the county has a, has, a, has a role there, along with our state and federal leaders. So we need to, to, to address those issues, both on the short term and the long term. Uh, short term, of course, when, when, when tragedy hits, communities are affected. Uh, government is, is, is certainly the, the area where people look to for help, and we should be and do everything we possibly can to make sure we take care of people's lives on the, on the, on the short term. But also on the long term, where the plan comes in, I think that we, I think the debate about climate change is pretty much over. It exists, and it's not something that, that is that we're looking forward to in the many years ahead. I think it's here. We need to address it, at all levels of government, um, county, local, state, and federal. And I think we have to do our part to listen to the experts, listen to the scientists, see what we need to do to address the issue of climate change. Uh, I'm 63 years old, so uh, climate change is here, but I worry about my kids, my, my, I don't know how many grandkids yet, but at some point I might, their lives and the effect that climate change would have. So I think that we need to come up with a plan at the county level, uh, both, both short term and long term, to address the issue of climate change and to make sure that we address the issues and needs of our local communities when they do have uh, these, these wild weather events that are occurring more frequently than they ever have. Okay, thank you. So let's talk about infrastructure. Uh, the county funds infrastructure, agricultural land preservation, libraries, parks, technology, public transpor transportation, and more. Um, and that is to encourage the local economy and make Berks a desired location. Are we doing enough in funding infrastructure, and is there anything you would increase or improve? Well, I, I, keep, I keep talking about economic development, and this plays right into that because I think it's so important uh, to, to fund our infrastructure. You mentioned all the areas that the county has oversight over, all very important. Um, I talked about the passenger rail service uh, that we, that from Reading to Philadelphia. Again, that issue has been talked about for many, many years. Uh, we even talked about it when I served in the legislature. And uh, I think what is, what is dramatically different now, and, and I think the reason that it's going to come to fruition, is the funding is available. There's cooperation amongst Berks and the other counties along the way that, that to work together. Um, the people certainly support it. I've been out and about throughout our county now the last month, few months, and everybody talks about uh, they want to be able to jump on the train here in Reading and go down to Philadelphia and enjoy themselves mm -hmm. down in Philly. But I also think it's important to note that it comes the other way also. So we can get people from Philly and the suburbs of Philadelphia to come to Reading and, and to, to enjoy what we have here. And that's where we can, what we can do better. I think um, uh, many people enjoy the Penn Avenue area in West Reading and what, all, the, all the opportunities there. 
Uh, I also want to make it a priority as, as commissioner to see what we can do to, to move all that development across the Penn Street Bridge into the city of Reading. I think it's important to have a viable uh, city, a city core. If, if there's issues that affect the city negatively, those issues are not going to stop at the, at the borders of the city. They're going to spread out to the rest of the county. So it's not just a city issue. It's a county issue that we need to make sure that our city of Reading is doing well with jobs, with economic development, and I'll make it a priority to work with the, with the mayor uh, and city council to do whatever we can at the county level to provide them the resources that they might need uh, to make the city a viable and uh, place for people to come to from not, not just here in Berks County, but from, from our region. Great. And great point. That was the first time that I actually heard someone mention that the train will go both ways so people <laughs> both can ways. come into Reading. Come, come to Reading as well. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, so the county recently took control of the local airport. Um, what are your views on how this will affect the local economy and whether it should be a county function? Well, I, I think that's an issue that I, I know there's been some controversy with that, and we certainly want to take a look at all aspects of it. But I think uh, as, as a county commissioner and, and my policy toward that would be to bring all affected area business leaders, uh, communities affected around the, the airport and what we can do to to make the airport uh, a better place, uh, economic development driver. Uh, so I, th I think we need to to look at the whole aspect. When I was younger, uh, we, we used to be airplanes in and out of there that would go to many areas around, around the country. We'd fly to Pittsburgh and Philly. I know that's limited now. Um, uh, we have to look at the cost, of course, of what that would ent entail, but I think we need to look at all aspects of, of as I said, all county, county uh, departments, with the airport being one of them, and I think we need to make sure that it addresses the needs of our business community and our residents, and, uh, and, and, and maybe, maybe do a comprehensive study. We'll have to look at that. Okay. What are your thoughts on when we should build a new prison, and how large a facility w uh, should we have, and what programs uh, should we have in order to prevent recidivism? Well, obviously, the next board of county commissioners is probably going to tackle the issue of building a new prison. It's needed, it's necessary, and, uh, and we need to do it in a cost-effective manner. Um, we need to, you know, the, the issue of, of prisons uh, and, and what services inmates need has dramatically changed over the years. Uh, I go back to my legislative time. I remember as a young legislator, it was you know crime, tough on crime, throw throw people in jail and throw away the key. Uh, that philosophy has proved to be costly and not and not effective. So when we build a new prison, how big we need it to be, we'll, 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 I'm sure there's there's experts on that of, of of the population and what we need to do. But I think we also need to look at not just being tough on crime, but being smart on crime. We need to provide mental health help for those residents because a large percentage have those kind of issues also addiction issues that we need to look at so I think it's important to look at a comprehensive study of, of what inmates needs are so that so that people on low level low level crimes can can get the services they need come out and be productive members of our society and live and, and be able to live and pay taxes like the rest of us okay. county commissioners are responsible for the county government's workforce um, are we right-sized and are we paying enough to attract the talent that we need here in Berks County? <clears throat> well, I, I haven't heard that, that there's too many county employees. I guess there are always some that think that there's too many in government, but I guess we can take a look at, you know, if I become county commissioner, I plan on sitting down with all the department heads and, and listening to their needs. I think as part of the budget process, we need to make sure that everything is transparent, what's necessary, uh, what we need to get to have, make sure that we have a good paid, um, well-trained workforce and give up people the opportunity that when they do come and work for Berks County, they're going to be paid well with good benefits so they can raise their families uh, in a cost-effective manner to, to the taxpayers. But we need to also make sure we have a good workforce so that people stay, they come in and they like what they do and, and, and stay so that turnover is not rampant because that's when you uh, lose some of the benefits of being you know, a county government. So I think we need to look at all aspects of that, just like everything else, and make sure that we have a, a well-paid, uh, well-trained workforce, and anything we can do to that end is important. 
So Berks County workers have a retirement fund and that fund has given no cost of living increase to retired workers for more than 25 years. Again, these are retired workers. Right. Yet elected officials get regular cost of living increases. What are your thoughts on this? Again, that's something that we need to look at. Uh, 25 years is a long time for not, for, no, for, no, for not having a COLA cost of living increase. So a judge, cost of living adjustment. Uh, I'd be willing to look at that. We need to make sure that it's cost effective. Uh, the cost that we have, uh, to the taxpayers. The taxpayers fund county government, so, so everything that we do, all the great things that we need to do and want to do and provide the services that, that people expect, we also need to remember that they're paying the bill and we need to look at, look at make sure that what we do is cost effective, um, but it's certainly something that I would look at. Okay. Pennsylvania election laws are set by the Commonwealth, but elections are run by the counties. Do you feel changes should be made to the election law? And if you could please explain. Well, uh, people might not know this, but because uh, in my travels, a lot of people do not. But the County Board of Commissioners, the first County Board of Commissioners is the election board in all the years except for the ones when they're running. So this year they don't sit on the board, but in the other three years uh, they do. Uh, I've made it a hallmark of, of my campaign to make sure that we have a viable uh, election Services Bureau transparent and, and I want to make sure that every vote is counted uh, appropriately. Um, I think I, my personal philosophy, my general philosophy on voting is we should try to make things easier for people to vote. I think it's important that when people vote democracy benefits. So I think we should do everything we can, maybe more drop boxes, more drop, drop boxes, maybe opportunities to meet with our f state and federal legislators to change some laws to make it easier for people to vote. Um, if when we win an election, the election is legitimate, it's also important not to say that when we lose it's rigged or there's something wrong with the election. We need to make sure that we listen to the voters. As county commissioners, we sit on a board we're not, we, we sit temporarily on that board, but the people put us there. So they're the ones that need to address, they're the ones that need to, to, to pick the board members. They're the ultimate deciders. So we need to accept the, the will of the voters. And when we win or lose, we need to accept that. And that's just point, that's the end of it. We really need, because I think democracy depends on that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back. We have a couple of minutes okay. um, yet, so I'm going to go back to a question about um, some people would call child care um, infrastructure, um, but the question really is should the county play a role in supporting child care so, par so parents who want to work can work? The answer, the short answer is yes. Uh, child care is infrastructure. I think child care is also a jobs issue. Um, you know, today, Two parent families both work with kids that, that uh, are in school or need child care and child care is critical. I know that there's a lot of money drying up at the federal level with regards to, to child care. So that has to that has to fall to sometimes, you know, when when higher forms of higher levels of government stop their funding, it drops to the to the level below, uh, to the state and to the locals. And I think we need to address the issue of child care in our community. Um, again, it's 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 a money issue. We need to look at it. But as county commissioners, we need to set priorities with regards to our budgets and our funding. And I think the child care issue is, is not a Democrat or Republican issue. Um, it's a jobs issue. And I think it's something that county commissioners need to really look at as those fundings at the federal level are drying up. OK. Um, are you active in any volunteer organizations? Maybe tell us a little bit about what you do in your non-working okay. time. <laughs> okay. Not a lot of stuff, but um, I, I used to be a member of, of Rotary International, so I, 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 I was, a, was a Rotarian. I also do, um, I'm, I'm a basketball referee, Berks County Basketball Officials Association, which is uh, uh, not a full-time job, but it could be during the <laughs> basketball season. So I really enjoy uh, being involved in that. Um, we, of course, get paid to do that, but there's also opportunities. We do a lot of volunteer work, and, and I like to work around the community uh, with regards to, to basketball and all athletics around Berks County I'm involved with. I think, I think athletics is important for young men and women to, 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 to become better citizens. Great. Um, well, if you would please give us your closing statement um, in a couple of minutes. Okay. And I'll wrap up and tell everyone again the the candidates that are running for county commissioner but go ahead okay well well thank you Kay. it was it was nice being with you with you today um 
and also want to thank BCTV for the opportunity to, uh, to express our opinions, my opinions, on issues that affect uh, our community and, and county government. Um, as I said earlier in, 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 the, in the interview, I, I, my background as a state representative and as a Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board member uh, sets me up well for being a county commissioner, both executive and, legis executive and legislative functions of being a county commissioner. I think the issue of economic development is something that we need to prioritize. I think we need to make Berks County a destination area, a great place to live, work, raise your family, provide opportunities with good jobs, uh, good paying jobs, good benefits, and we also need to remember, you know, we didn't talk about this, but housing is also an important issue. We need to make uh, housing a little more affordable. I have, young, I have my, ki my kids are in, are in a, a sort of looking at buying houses part of their lives, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy with the cost of housing. So uh, those are just some of the areas that I'll, that I'll prioritize as a county commissioner. As I said, economic development, the passenger rail line, uh, election services, uh, it's a big county, and I look forward to serving the people of, of this wonderful county. Okay. Well, thank you, Dante Santoni, Jr., for sharing your views with us. Um, I'd like to remind voters, this is important, um, you are going to vote for two candidates, of which there are four people running, and it's the three highest that vote getters that will actually be elected. The four people running are Democrats Jess Royer and Dante Santoni Jr., who we just heard from, and Republicans are Christian Leinbach and Michael Rivera. Remember, you vote for two, but the three that get the highest votes will actually get elected for the next four years. You will find candidates up front interviews on BCTV, its website, and its YouTube page. For more information on candidates, please go to the League's online voters guide, vote411.org. Thank you very much for listening to Candidates Up Front. I'm Kay Herring. Have a good day.